Welcome to Loving Truth. We've been looking at the topic of witnessing or sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people, sometimes called evangelism. We've been looking in the scriptures to see uh, our, about our responsibility and, and even see how we can do this and how others have done it in the scriptures. So we looked at Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And John chapter 4, where Jesus talked to the woman at the well and then said to his disciples, open your eyes and look. The fields are already ripe for harvest and people are ready to believe. The harvest is plentiful, he said in Matthew, but the labors are few. We noticed, Paul said in Romans chapter 1, I am obligated to share the good news. I am eager to share the gospel and I am not ashamed of the gospel and we should be in that same category. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we persuade people by the fear of the Lord and we are motivated by the fear of God in that positive sense that God is awesome and we are to revere him and bow before him and honor him. But we're also compelled by the love of Christ because we judge that since one died for all, then all were dead. And those who live should begin to live for themselves, not for themselves, but for the one who died for them and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, we're ambassadors for Christ and we're to share that wonderful message with others. Now, I want us to look at Acts chapter 1 because there's another great portion of scripture about our privilege and responsibility of being a witness. So the Bible tells us that after Jesus suffered and uh, after his resurrection, he met with his disciples. He appeared to them for 40 days and talked about the things concerning the kingdom of God. This is Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift from my father, the one he promised which you've heard me talk about. John baptized you with water, John the Baptist did, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that's a reference to Pentecost that takes place in Acts chapter two. Well, the disciples, as they were with Jesus said, Lord, what time are you going to restore the kingdom? So they were looking for the earthly kingdom first. But Jesus said to them, it's not for you to know the times of the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Lord Jesus was always serving under the power of the Holy Spirit. Actually, Acts chapter 1, verse 2 says before Jesus was taken up into heaven, he was giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And then he told them to wait in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high, as the old translation has it, until the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And then he says, when you wait... The Holy Spirit will come, you'll receive power, and you will be my witnesses. Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, is the fulfillment of these words, but it also lays down an important principle that we too must be under the control of the Holy Spirit if we are going to share the message of Christ with others. To be a powerful witness means to be we must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Power is needed. We are not the ones who change people's lives. We can save no one, but God does use us as instruments and it's the power of the Holy Spirit who does the work through us. And when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, they share the word of God with boldness and power. The Bible tells us that we are dependent upon God's energy in us. And when you believe in Christ, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit comes to live within you, I should say. Being filled with the Holy Spirit actually mean we're, means we're under his control. So we can have the Holy Spirit in us, but not really have the Holy Spirit controlling us. So when we share Christ with others, we need to make sure that we're leaning upon his power. And then when the Spirit of God is in control, we'll be eager and we'll be excited about sharing the good news of Christ. 
when the Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses in your hometown, Jerusalem, in your state or country, uh, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's why we support missionaries whose mission is to preach the gospel to every creature in over the whole earth. Fanny Crosby said, rescue the perishing, duty demands it, strength for your labor, the Lord will provide. That's the Holy Spirit. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful and Jesus will save. May we be reminded of our wonderful privilege of sharing the good news with others. Father in heaven, thank you for touching our hearts by the conviction of the Holy Spirit to see our sin and the wooing of the Holy Spirit to bring us to Christ. And in believing on him, the regenerating power, the new life given by the Holy Spirit in our hearts, sealed by his spirit until the day of redemption and now filled with his power to do his work in his way. May we be faithful witnesses until we are in person with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.